Hello and welcome back to Curiosity Mine. I accumulate a lot of ideas for videos to make for this channel, and unfortunately, not all of them work out. Sometimes they're just too small to warrant making a whole video about, sometimes they're completely unresearchable because the subject matter is too obscure, and sometimes they seem like a great idea but they just drop off the priority list because something changes and a story just isn't that interesting anymore. Well, this time I'm going to put together three little stories that actually fall victim to all three of those reasons, but maybe if we put them together, they'll be more than the sum of their parts. Hinchinbrook is a suburb in Western Sydney. It's part of the city of Liverpool. And what's interesting about Hinchinbrook is not much really. It's a relatively new suburb. It only came into existence in 1986. It has a population of about 11,000 people and the postcode I believe is 2168. It's a very multicultural suburb and that's really about it for Hinchinbrook. It's 3.6 square kilometres of medium density suburban housing with a few parks and some schools and some shops. But it does have this little corner over here which for some reason has all of its streets named after places in rural northwestern New South Wales. I'm about to show you some really bad quality photos that I took back in 2012 feels like yesterday, so I apologise for the fuzzy grainy images. Also, some of the street signs have changed now. Um, they've got the same names, obviously, but the designs of the signs have changed. I'm going to chuck in a few images from Google Street View to fill in the gaps because I don't have pictures of all of them. Anyway, if you visit Hinchinbrook, you can find Lightning Ridge Road, Angledool Avenue, Collarinabri Road, Grawen Close, Gaduga Close and Walgett Close. And that's about it. I was really hoping there'd be more to this story, but I seriously think that it's just a case of some town planners that got a bit excited and named a bunch of streets after places in New South Wales. The rest of the southern part of Hinchinbrook also has streets named after New South Wales towns, including Leeton, Glen Innes, Inverell, Warrialda, Tenterfield and Byrock, and there's probably a few others. If nothing else, it's kind of cool to see how they've grouped the streets together in a way that kind of a little bit approximates the actual locations of the towns in New South Wales, but you can see why this one wasn't ever going to quite make an entire video, can't you? Hmm. You probably already know that I've got a bit of an obsession with Lightning Ridge appearing in obscure forms of media. We've already looked at a silent film from 1920, a comic book from 1949, and a video game from 2020. So you can well imagine I was pretty excited to find out that there's also a serialised radio show from 1952 called Black Lightning that was set partly at Lightning Ridge. And it even starred some recognisable names, but unfortunately it's lost media. It's, it's gone. None of it exists anymore. There's no recordings, there's no scripts, there's really nothing. Um, at least there's nothing that I've been able to find and apparently nothing has been archived anywhere. The Shadow of Lightning Ridge, which was the silent film from 1920, at least that had a movie poster. So I was able to build the video around that, the poster. It's tangible, it's real, it exists, I can show it to you. But all I have for Black Lightning is the title, the year, the cast, and a brief description of the plot. And that may sound like a lot in comparison to a movie poster, but it's really only one paragraph of text and I've got nothing else to go on. The cast is interesting. Among others, it includes Rod Taylor, who you might remember from any number of films in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s. He had quite the career, but I specifically remember him from the 1960 film adaptation of H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, in which he piloted an armchair with an umbrella attached to it off into the distant future. Uh, here's the description of Black Lightning from the Complete Rod Taylor website. This thriller serial, which debuted June 16th, 1952, was set amid the Sydney underworld and the Lightning Ridge opal mines. Harp Maguire had the lead role of Chris Deloraine, but Rodney Taylor had probably the most unforgettable character, the stuttering Jimmy the Whistler. It sounds pretty compelling. I would totally listen to a gangster thriller with ties to the Lightning Ridge opal mines. It sounds like it was a lot of fun, but wouldn't it be great if I could somehow make one more bizarre connection between Black Lightning, the 1952 radio serial, and Lightning Ridge, the opal mining community? Well, I can. It's tenuous and it's a little bit ridiculous, but I can. 
Black Lightning also starred Grant Taylor, who is no relation to Rod Taylor, they just happen to have the same last name. Uh, Grant Taylor played the role of General Henderson in the UK science fiction series UFO, which featured this car, a model of which, for some inexplicable reason, is included in the Model Mine, which is a diorama of Opal Street, Lightning Ridge, that's currently in the collection of the Big Opal at Lightning Ridge. I made a video about that here with more info about that weird car, but unfortunately no answers as to why it's in there. So yeah, Grant Taylor, UFO, Ed Straker's weird looking car in the model mine. So like I said, it's tenuous, but it works for me. If you know anything at all about Black Lightning, the 1952 radio serial, not the 2017 DC Comics television series, then please let me know because I would be very excited to learn more about Black Lightning. And this is a story that I've had on my list for a very, very long time, but it's been a bit of a logistical and even a diplomatic nightmare to turn it into a story that I can actually tell you. So Paul Hogan is an Australian actor who you may remember from Crocodile Dundee if you're around my age, or The Paul Hogan Show if you're a little bit older. If you're a little bit younger, you might not know who he is at all. Uh, for the longest time, it's been a bit of a legend that Paul Hogan was born at Lightning Ridge. In fact, if you look Paul Hogan up on the internet movie database which is the internet's repository for all knowledge about movies you will see that it still has his birthplace listed as Lightning Ridge. This has been a frustrating story to try to put together. It's been hard to find sources and it's hard to verify information and it's been a little bit difficult to get people involved. I really don't like making videos about things that are in any way controversial. So this has just been sitting on the back burner since about 2015, which coincidentally is about when I started making videos for this channel. So I've been given a few different versions of the Paul Hogan was born at Lightning Ridge story over the years, and all of them have their merits. So one version I was told by a trusted source is that Paul Hogan, the actor, was not born at Lightning Ridge, but his fictional alter ego from The Paul Hogan Show, who was also called Paul Hogan, but was referred to as Hoags, was born at Lightning Ridge. And somehow over the years, the wires got crossed and now everyone believes that the real Paul Hogan was born there. It's an interesting story, but it's really, really hard to verify because they've only ever released the best of the Paul Hogan show on DVD. And that DVD doesn't include any episodes or clips that reference Lightning Ridge as Paul Hogan's birthplace. There are a number of Paul Hogan show compilations on YouTube, and I haven't been able to find anything in those that confirms that Hoags, the fictional character, was born in Lightning Ridge. And even if I could access the entire series, it ran for 12 seasons. So there's a lot of it to trawl through. If you ever have the opportunity to watch the rest of the series and you find something that I didn't, please let me know because I'd love to do a follow-up to this with some more information. I've always had a little bit of an issue with the whole Paul Hogan was born at Lightning Ridge story because of the town of Lightning Ridge itself. So Lightning Ridge has two main industries. One of them is obvious, it's the opal industry. It's opal mining, opal jewelry, the opal economy. The other industry at Lightning Ridge is tourism. And the thing is, the tourism industry at Lightning Ridge doesn't always rely on the opal industry to draw in tourists. There's a lot of attractions at Lightning Ridge that are based on other things, like, for example, art. There's art galleries, murals, underground sculptures, and photography. There's also architecture. There's things like the castle, the bottle house. There's heritage-listed buildings. And there's other things again. There's, uh, there's a massive cactus nursery. There's the artesian baths. All of those things contribute to tourism at Lightning Ridge without being directly related to Opal. But what you might have noticed is that none of those things have any connection to Lightning Ridge being the birthplace of Paul Hogan. And I'm pretty sure if this story was true, there'd be at least one statue of Crocodile Dundee, and there'd be a bunch of plaques on buildings and park benches commemorating the birthplace of one of the most famous Australian entertainers in history, but there just isn't. There's one tiny sign, one sign that says Hoags was born here. And I'll actually leave it as an exercise to the viewer to locate that sign should you find yourself as a tourist in Lightning Ridge. I will give you a hint, you'll need to pay an entrance fee in order to find it. But 
My point here is that if Paul Hogan was genuinely born in the town, there wouldn't only be evidence of it, it would be celebrated. But anyway, the main reason I haven't done anything with this story in at least the last three years is that in 2019 the ABC did an interview with Paul Hogan for Australian Story and Paul pretty much straight up said that the Lightning Ridge thing is a complete fabrication. I wasn't born in Lightning Ridge, but I got some lovely presents from the people at Lightning Ridge and apparently there was some place up there they were saying this is where I used to live for their tourism, so I wasn't going to shoot that down. Paul Hogan was not born at Lightning Ridge at all. He was actually born in Sydney and he grew up in Western Sydney. In the ABC interview, Paul confirmed that he was not born at Lightning Ridge and he just perpetuated the myth because it was harmless, it made him seem more interesting when he was trying to get work as an actor, and maybe it helped out Lightning Ridge tourism a little bit. I'm really not sure about that last part, but I do appreciate the sentiment. Now, can someone please go to IMDB and submit an update to Paul Hogan's page so that that at least will finally reflect the truth. So those are three short stories that didn't have enough momentum to stand on their own. I have a lot more like this that I might be able to put together in the future, so please let me know if this format works for you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Curiosity Mind on YouTube and following along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The links are all in the description. If you think your friends might find this interesting, please feel free to share the video with them. It really helps the channel if you can help spread these stories around. And thank you for watching.